Okay, today we're going to install the new, or fairly new, Even 4 Android unit into a 2005 E53 X5. The truck I'm working on has the Hi-Fi audio with factory nav, so you'll need, if you're doing the same, you'll need the extension cable. Any of the, any of the X5s with nav will need the extension cable. Here's a look at the unit. Pretty nice. I've used the Avon 2 before and was pretty happy with that. This should be a substantial upgrade for that, or to that. They give you the short harnesses. These harnesses are for if you have the, the base level audio systems for the X5s. And then they give you the two different pinout versions. The round plugs for the earlier cars and the, the uh, spade terminal ones for the uh, newer ones. Okay, that's pretty much everything. You just got all the accessories in the box. Oh, if you have the DSP system, you will need the iBus interface as well, if you're installing into the DSP system. Okay, let's get started. This is what the layout will look like in a navigation unit car. You have to run the long extension harness all the way to the back of the vehicle underneath the spare tire. They've given all four harnesses for the different variants of E53. And up front, they've provisioned for the iBus and the CAN bus interfaces on the harness, which is a which is nice. And all your accessories. And depending on what you've ordered from them, you may or may not have to run some of these. Okay, to remove the factory head unit, we'll pull the uh, dash trims out. And a pry tool works best. You can use a uh, flathead screwdriver wrapped in a cloth, but I definitely prefer a trim tool. You just work your way down. And then same thing on the little piece on the other side. Okay, to remove the plastic trim ring, just pull on it. It's held on with clips on the top and the bottom. Okay, now that you have access to the head unit, there are four screws, two on the top and two on the bottom to undo. I believe they're a small Torx screw, maybe T10 or T15. 
Uh, to get to these bottom ones, you may have to eject the unit to come out and give you enough clearance down here to get these two. Other than that, those four fasteners are the only thing holding this in. And then there's two plugs on the back when you pull it out. A blue and a white. Now the reason this is not connected is there was an AVEN 2 installed in here previously. And the factory plugs are down here, zip tied inside the harness. But they're still there. Those are the two harnesses you'll use to disconnect the factory unit. With the factory head unit out, now it's unfortunately time to start taking the interior out. There are easier ways to do it than the way I do it. Uh, I like to run the wires along the factory path, which comes down the transmission tunnel, and then back under the seat, and then follows underneath the carpet and back along that back, behind the seat, up and around, and into the trunk area. You can just tuck it under the sides and then run it up the dash. They do give you enough wire to do that, and that would definitely be easier. Uh, so, if you're going to go that route, by all means, but I'm going to I'm going to show how to do it the way I typically do it. The HVAC panel, our HKA, pops out three harnesses on the back, and from there you can reach around and pop this out. If your IHK is like mine, you'll have some buttons pop out as well. Uh, after you get that out, it's usually best to remove the seats. There's one, two, and then in the back there's two more, plus this bolt right here for the seat belt. So five bolts total and then the seat can be lifted out. Keep in mind, if you're going to remove the seat with the battery still connected, you will get an uh, airbag warning light when you unplug the, uh, the harness under the seat if you cycle the power. Uh, so if you don't want to do that or you don't have the capability of resetting the airbag lights, pull the battery terminal off before you take the electrical connector off the bottom of the seat. It's just one big connector. Uh, make sure you don't disconnect the battery before you've undone all the bolts though because you need to be able to raise and lower the seat to be able to access all five bolts. Okay. After the seats are out, the front seats, you can see the, the two bolt or two nuts up front, two bolts in the rear. After that's those have been removed, you can then pull up the rear seat. Which is probably the easiest thing in this installation. And just lift it out and it slides out. Oh, in the middle seat belt, you'll have to unbolt that, and then it'll slide out. If you have heated rear seats, there'll also be a couple of uh, electrical connectors down there as well. All right, with the rear seat out, the next step is one of the least fun processes, and that's removing the center console. To do that, there's one screw here and then some push pins along the fabric. You'll pull the e-brake handle off and unclip it just, and just slide this off. This will have to be put in neutral so make sure the handbrake is on so the truck doesn't roll. And this will have to be in neutral and then you pull the gear lever straight up and then this will come off and you'll see some fasteners there as well. But I'll take some take some shots of that as I'm doing it so that you can see how that's how that's done. The two sides are symmetrical, so what I'm doing on one side you'll you'll do on the other side as well.
Okay, here you can see the three of the screws, Phillips, 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 and then there's another Phillips down here, and here as well. Then you have to come in here and pop out the bin that's normally in there, and there's two Phillips screws in there as well. There we go. After that's removed, you can remove the air vents and there will be electrical harnesses back there to remove as well to help loosen this up. Alright, I'll be back in a moment. Here's what it looks like with the whole center console removed. Sorry about having to mute the audio on the last clip, but uh, I didn't want the Cranberries record label to uh, claim a copyright. <laughs> After you have it to this point, the wire harness, if you follow here, it runs down underneath the carpet here and across that way. So you have to remove that bottom kick panel piece and then come across and remove the B-pillar, the bottom of the B-pillar, that bottom kick panel, and then the back seats will also have to be removed. I'll show you that part when we get there. Next thing that comes out is the side bolsters for the rear seat. You pull them from the top and then lift them up. You can see the little latch right here. Sometimes this stays in the in the holder, sometimes it comes out like it's supposed to, and then you can just pop it back in. Let me go see if I can do this other one on camera with one hand. Sorry about the motion sickness. All right, fold the seat down, grab the top. Give her a tug and then lift it up. See, this one also stayed in the, the clip. I'll pop that one back in in a minute. The wire harness runs from there down underneath this carpet. And with all this removed, you can start pulling up the carpet. Up here, you can see where the, this is, this wire harness here is for the Avon 2. It's already installed. The new harness will follow this, to this same path. After you get these two bolsters out, unfortunately, you're going to want to undo the rear seats. And there's some Torx, bolt, Torx bolts here, two here two here and two on the other side. To access those, you have to take these out, these side panels. So I'll show you how to do that when we get there. All right. In the back, you'll remove the cargo, the lower cargo tray. The two side panels, they just clip out. And then if you have a spare, you'll remove the spare. And you'll be left with the Air pump, if you have rear axle air or four or uh, two axle air, uh, then 10 millimeters, 10 millimeter, four 10 millimeters. Take the take the actual compressor out. You can just set it aside. 13 millimeters. There's four of them to take this off. Uh, it's just the suspension or the support for the compressor. Then you remove 
the Phillips head screws that you see here and then you'll have access to the electronics tray which I'll show you after we get in there these screws uh, this side can stay along stay the way it is actually this side will have to come off so there's I believe some torx screws in there if they're not torx they're Phillips but I'm pretty sure they're torx uh, to get this top piece off this has to come off Phillips said screw here uh, there's a couple of screws behind here then this will come off with these, I believe they're single-use plastic screws and rivets. So I'll show you all that after I get that off. Okay, so to get this panel out to reach these wires, this has to come out this has to come out, unfortunately. This has to come out. To take this out, pull this door off. There are two 13 millimeter bolts there. One Phillips head here, and this Phillips head, and this Phillips head. And then over here, there's a push pin here here and the Torx bolts that were up here and this push pin here as well. I'll get back to you once we have all that off. Alright, these are Allen, Allen head screws not Torx as I thought before. There's three of them, one, two, three, and a push pin on the other side that I showed you before and then this is loose. You'll have to pop this out as well up at the top. You see the black receptacle for the push pin. Then once this is off, there will be three fasteners up here to remove and then that side panel can come off and you'll have access to the full wire harness. I bet you wish you didn't have factory nav now. After the side panels are removed, you can see how the wire harness is run. From down here, up following the factory harness, all the way around. And this part will require pulling up the carpet and removing this plastic panel here and the wires actually run underneath the carpet here. And then take a left straight across and we'll exit up here. Here's where the wiring loom runs from the back of the truck down the factory wire harness. There's a white plastic panel that covers this area. You remove that, it's four fasteners, and then you can follow the factory path up and you can pull the carpet up after you remove, if your truck is equipped with it, the rear lighting for the footwell. Those lenses right there. <coughs> Then you can pull the carpet up so that you have access to the factory wire loom. Let me get the flashlight. And then you can go run it here. It'll pop out from the carpet here. And then you run it over across and up and into the dash. So it'll come out right here, run it over and across, and then up and into the dash. Now again, if you don't have factory navigation, you won't have to do any of this. It's much easier installation. Okay, here you can see how the wire harness is run across the transmission tunnel and then up behind the brace and then backing up. You can be a little fiddly trying to get this quad lock adapter up through this, but it does fit, so you don't have to cut anything. Uh, once you get to this point, you, uh, it's going to seem like you have a ridiculous amount of harnesses here. But, it's going to depend on what you're installing. If you're installing a backup camera, then you're going to have uh, an RCA coming through with a couple of individual wires uh, for the reverse trigger and then your camera positive. Uh, make sure you run those with the main harness that was run through the car. 
as well as any other accessories you might want. Um, like we, I have uh, RCA's run for amplifiers. Uh, those all have to be run along the same path. Uh, the DVR, we're doing the front DVR in this one as well. And the microphone is installed up here on top. Uh, by the overhead controls. I don't know if you can see that. Right there. I'll show you how to do that because it involves dropping the glove box and pulling the A-pillar to run the wires. I'll show you that in a moment. You also have the GPS wire. That's also run up there. Uh, it doesn't have to be. You can install it behind the dash. It still gets a signal back there. Um, and that's most everything. It's going to seem like you have a ridiculous amount of plugs back here because of all the USBs and uh, all the other connections that the Avon has. You're not going to use all of them. The iBus adds another connection as well. And, and you're only going to need the iBus if you have a DSP equipped, uh, digital sound processing equipped uh, factory audio system. So, I'll get back with you in a moment when we pull the glove box and the A-pillars. To remove the A-pillar, it's a T20 screw underneath the plastic airbag, or I forget the acronym that they use on there. Uh, the little cover, you just pop that off with a really small flathead. And you take that torque screw off, and then there's a couple of push pins on the top, and you slide it up that way. Okay, with the A-pillar, once you've had that off, I already went and reinstalled mine, but you'll be able to run any wires you have up here for the mic, for the camera, for the GPS if you want to put up there. Uh, and you just run them across the top of the headliner, down the side of the A-pillar. And there's room here you can tuck along the side. This along the side here and it'll sit in there flush behind without interfering with any of the panels or the weather stripping. Then when you get it down to the bottom, so you can get some light down here. You don't have to drop the glove box, which is nice. Just this panel, this black panel underneath that has the footwell illumination. It's a single Phillips head screw and then you pull it down and it slides out after removing these locking locking push pins, there's two of them, one on each side. So three fasteners total and then pull down and pull out. Then you can run the wire along the side over here up and out the top to meet up with the rest of the wires for the stereo. So glove box does not have to come down after all. Okay, I'll be back with connecting all the uh, harnesses up. All right, once you get to the point where all the wires for your accessories are run to the front, you can go ahead and put the whole interior back together. That way the last step is connecting the unit itself. And we'll go through some, or try to go through all the wires that are, that are in there, in the harness. Because there's quite a few, and some of them are a little confusing. Let me try to get you a better angle here. All right. Okay. For navigation unit installers, the long harness just has the big quad lock connector on it. And to that, you will attach the short harness that they sent with your pinouts. Either early model will be the round pins, late model will be the uh, spade pins. That was, that's a smarter way that they do that, they don't have to send as many harnesses. The old Avian 2, they, they had multiple harnesses. Okay, and then if you ran a backup camera, you will have a input and input for it, which attaches to the main harness, which is labeled backup cam appropriately. Gets a little confusing. If you have the rear DVR, you also have an input for. Uh, 
back sight, I think is what they labeled it. Let me see if I can find it here. Yeah, here it is. They call it back, back sight video. So I just did a front DVR here, so the input from that goes to front cam video. And then it also has a USB input, since so the camera itself is USB. This is the mic input, which is on the same harness. The ground and the camera positive, camera battery positive, I did not use uh, as I grounded and gave power to my camera uh, in another location in the back of the truck, so I didn't have to run those to the front. The pink wire on the same harness is your reverse camera trigger wire, which you will run from wherever you choose to trigger it. Usually it's with a reverse light bulb in the back. E53s are a little different. They use pulse, pulse width modulation for the uh, rear taillights, so you need to use a relay in conjunction with that. There are diagrams online that are available. I can probably post one uh, in the video as well when I'm editing it. Okay, so you've got your mic. Yeah, this is gonna. This is a lot of wires. Mic, USB for the camera. That's all on that harness. And then. On this harness, this is for the, any aftermarket amplifiers or video out for screens that you have. Um, nothing real. Yeah, everybody's pretty familiar with that. Uh, amplifier continuous is on that. That's your remote wire for your amplifier. Two video outs for screens. Antenna wire, if for some reason you're in a vehicle. Well, E53s won't have to worry about that. Uh, okay. Then we have your USBs. They can be placed either in the glove box or anywhere you choose, really. Uh, if you're doing a navigation with DSP unit, one of your USBs will be used for the iBus, the iBus unit right here. Your CAN bus will plug in right next to it. So that uses up one of your USBs. Uh, the other one in this truck is used with the front camera. And so we only have one that's available for uh, auxiliary input. I went ahead and ran that to a, a receptacle in the back. Um, I've, I've installed them in the glove box before, that works fine. <coughs> I think that covers most everything in the harness that people might have questions with. Uh, trying to find any loose wires that might be confusing. Oh yes, the key one, I didn't use that. I'm not sure what that's intended for. And then there's also on the main harness a reverse plus 12 volt, the reverse 12 volt. I'm not sure what that's intended to be used for either. Um, I'm guessing maybe it's a trigger for something. You could use it as a 12 volt trigger. Uh, like I said, I'm not using that The reverse camera. We did test the unit, it works fine. So I'm going to go ahead and plug all these things up. It does look like a lot of stuff, but the E53 does have a lot of room behind the dash unit. So there will be plenty of room to be able to stuff all this, um, which is nice. I'll be right back after I get all this stuff plugged in to show you the unit, actually mounting the unit. All right, I tidied everything up as best you can with all these wires. Like I said, there's plenty of room in an E53, so even though this looks like a mess, it's not going to be a problem. I've already stuffed at least half of it back there. I have to leave out enough in order to actually connect the unit. Uh, could be a lot worse. Could be an E36 or an E30 BMW, and then you really have problems. Okay, so your microphone will get connected here to a pigtail. The GPS antenna is a call it a factor cable from BMW. Um, I take it back, that's actually the uh, FM AM antenna. The GPS antenna for this particular unit is in here somewhere. And it is actually one of the uh, screw-on types. Yeah, here we go. We'll put that on last since it's the shortest cable and will probably give you the most the least room to work with back here. Okay, the cream colored is for your auxiliary inputs and your uh, amplifier outputs. 
the manual has a diagram of where to plug all these in, so I'm not going to give you a, a shot of the back of the unit or anything. Just make sure you have your CAN bus plugged in. This is what gives you, gives you steering wheel controls uh, and that sort of thing. Alright, there's the harness for the backup camera. Where is the... Here we go. Okay, and then the main harness is a big one. Let's try to get some of these wires out of the way. All right. There we go. This is the large main one above the fuse. All right. Okay, now the GPS screws in to a threaded post. It's kind of like a coax cable for your cable television. Okay, and then this unit is not that deep either, so it will not be a problem at all sitting it in there. All right, and that's it. And then there's four screws, the same four screws that you used to take out the factory unit will secure this in there. And then there's a bezel trim piece uh, to go around just like the factory unit and that's pretty much it. I'll cover some details in the video while I'm editing it to give some give a little bit closer detail on certain things. Uh, that should be everything you need to be able to actually install one of these into a navigation unit uh, or into a factory navigation X5. If you don't have a navigation you can cut off five hours off the installation time. Easy. So good luck! Okay, I realize I should probably have some video in here of the unit actually on. But, also, the last step that they say is to install the trim ring around the, the bezel. Uh, definitely follow that, because it's, it's pretty firm. I imagine it would be fairly hard to get back off once you install it. So, test all the functions uh, that, you, that you went with. You know, backup camera, uh, I can show you that. Backup camera and uh, forward camera, or whatever options you went with, just make sure everything's working before you put that bezel on. So, that should give you an idea of how to install the head unit in the uh, E53 with navigation. Good luck, and feel free to refer to the video and leave a comment.